You know, you gotta pay for that, right? Hey, come on. Not okay. Thank you. So, in this film, will we see a different side of Charles? Maybe something we haven't seen before? Not only will you see a different side of Charles, you'll see a transformed Charles. The controlled, intelligent, sensitive, intellectual has been replaced by a scatterbrained, crazy, physically uh, fragile, and highly dangerous individual that one could ever imagine that Charles Xavier would become a dangerous member of society uh, is unthinkable. But here he is, putting the world at risk. And can you talk about the evolution between his relationship with Logan and himself? Yes. Um, from the very beginning, Charles always had a, a caring relationship with Logan. He knew everything about Logan's past, uh, how he came about, what had been done to him, the misery and agony of that. And he always felt a protectiveness towards Logan. Logan has always been a difficult personality, independent, sometimes aggressive, sometimes mean-spirited and hostile, but essentially with his heart in the right place. Uh, now. Uh, there has been a, a turnaround and the carer is Logan and the vulnerable, weak, fragile one is Charles. And as I said, not only vulnerable, but very dangerous. Ooh, I'm excited to see. Um, can you tell me what you hope that fans will take away from the film? What they'll be thinking about afterwards? Well, uh, our primary duty no matter what we're doing, is to entertain. But entertaining can have all kinds of aspects to it. There are themes within this film which some people have already identified as being a contemporary commentary on present-day society, particularly in Europe and the United States. I don't think that was the overt intention <clears throat> of the producers and the writers of this movie. It has, unfortunately, come about that way. But yes, there is some instruction in this movie. There are warnings contained within this movie. And if they are listened to in any way whatsoever, then not only have we perhaps entertained, but we've also been a benefit. And finally, can you tell us what it was like working with James Mangold and the rest of the cast? I, I'd only done one day's work with James in the past. Uh, Ian McKellen and I shot a one day short little brief scene as a fill in for the first Wolverine movie. Um, but I met with James very, very early on in the process and um, enjoyed that, oh, I think two, three hour conversation that we had about the screenplay and about the character of, um, of Charles and, and particularly about his disintegration. <clears throat> I loved working with James. He is a craftsman. He knows filmmaking so well. He knows, on the one hand, exactly what he wants, but I have never before worked with a director who is so open to other possibilities, to input, <coughs> I'm sorry, from his cast, to bringing up the unexpected, even at times inviting us to improvise, and which is something that always appeals to me. And some of those little improvisations actually made it into the film. With the cast, well, the X-Men are reduced now to two in this film. And uh, to have uh, such a close relationship with Logan, with Hugh Jackman, was a delight, as it has been for 17 years. So how does it feel to join the cast of this established and now legendary franchise? Uh, I guess, you know, I mean, it seemed pretty good. Huh? I would hope, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm beyond flattered and um, it's a privilege. It really is a privilege. And what was it like working with James Mangold and the rest of the cast? 
Um, a treat. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've I don't know how many films I've made now, um, but there's there's definitely a learning curve that everyone will experience. Uh, you know, I was in drama school for a while. That was then. You know, the work that I do now is now, um, but it takes repetition. Whether you're a first-time filmmaker, you're you're going to have to eat it sometime. You know, and um, it's it's. It's nice to be working with experienced people. Definitely. And yeah. what do you hope that fans um, will take away from the film or be thinking about afterwards? Well, hopefully they'll want more um, out of this demographic now. I think this is going to be, I think it's going to shatter a lot of, uh, I hope it does. I hope it shatters a lot of, um, you know, this demographic is like, you know, building falls on you. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's it's maybe it's not my thing. I don't know, but um, I think I think this film is 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 taking these superhero films and is is making a realistic film. You know, I think there's a disclaimer in our in our script that you know if a building falls on you, you die. <laughs> it's like this is legit. Um, so I'm hoping that people will have a new hunger, um, and I, I I think we're going to take away a, a character driven story about a father and uh, a daughter both yearning for something that they don't r really are consciously aware of uh, and sort of s uncomfortably shifting into these positions. Aiden, Mr. Monson. You understand you're trespassing right now, right? I have an easement with the previous owner of your property. <laughs> previous being the operative word. Who's this? the guy telling you to get back in your nice truck and go play Oki Dickhead somewhere else. Hey, Carl. It looks like Mr. Monson hired some muscle. It looks that way. He's a friend of mine. Friend with a big mouth. I hear that a lot. And you probably hear this, too. More than I'd like. And you know the drill. I'm gonna count to three. And you're gonna start walking away. Yeah, right to this one. One. I have a lawyer now. Two. Three. Ah, ah. Yeah, that boss. <clears throat> you know the drill. Get the hell out of here. Great. So the first question is, um, will we see a different side of Logan that has never been seen before? I think I think our goal in this film was to try and go intimate with Logan, to try and go deep. And in that way, to try and get to the very things that scare him most, um, which aren't villains and aren't the end of the world or his own life, but intimacy, uh, love, um, connection with others. Um, at the same time, the other side of Logan I think you're going to get to see is just slam-bam action like you haven't seen. Just bloody, intense, um, brutal fight sequences and action sequences. Um, a, b a, because of our rating, and B, because... It was our goal to just try and do something that felt grittier and more real. Great. So on that note, what are some of the references or inspirations for the cinematic feel of this film? I think mostly Westerns. I think that, the, th to me, the kind of economy of this film, the kind of um, road trip, it's kind of a ride across the range of, uh, in a pickup truck as opposed to horseback, if you will. But. Um, it, it's a real journey film. It's a road picture. We travel from the Mexican border all the way to the uh, Canadian border. And I, I think Westerns are the real template for a lot of what we do. And what do you hope or think that fans will be thinking about after seeing the movie? Well, I hope they're wrestling with the power of this character. I think the whole point in making the film was to really help you feel the weight and iconic nature of this character, his unique character in the in the world of, of superheroes, um, his reluctance, his hesitance, his own modesty, his incredible rage, and yet tender heart at the same time. I think there's so many interesting aspects to this character. Um, I just wanted to get as much out of the way so we could go as deep with him as we could. And can you talk a little bit about his relationship, Logan's relationship to other characters, specifically Charles? Well, this film, this film sets him up in a very real way as both a, a caretaker for his father figure, 
um, if not his father, in Charles Xavier, who's got a degenerative brain disease and is living with Logan just south of the border in an abandoned smelting plant. And, um, and into their world comes this little girl who um, turns out is Logan's daughter. Um, so you've got this character who hates intimacy and doesn't want to be responsible for anything, who suddenly is on the road and caring and protecting for an 11-year-old girl and a 95-year-old man. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about Logan in this film and if we'll see a different side of the character? Oh, yeah. I, I think the whole film feels different in tone, character-wise, than any of the others. And that was sort of our goal. I didn't want it to feel like the final chapter of a saga, but a whole fresh new thing, stake some new ground. And Logan in this film is more human, hence the title. Uh, he's sick. He's healing, his powers are dwindling, he's vulnerable. He's also looking after an aging father figure in Charles Xavier and hiding him out. He's under stress, he doesn't have money, he's a limo driver trying to earn enough bucks to buy the, to get by, to buy the meds that Charles needs. And there's some very sort of mundane, very normal, everyday kind of stuff going on. But clearly he's checked out, he's at the bottom. And so what James Mangold and Scott Frank did is kind of create a world of someone whose biggest fear is love and intimacy, because um, that only brings pain, of surrounding him with a family forced upon him. And can you talk a little bit about those relationships, mm. for example, with Logan and Charles in this film? So Charles has got dementia, Charles Xavier, who's been a father figure mentor, probably understands him and knows him best because he's a closed book, Logan. So he quips and he's tough and all that. But Charles knows where he comes from, knows his background and knows the demons he's fighting. Um, so he knows him. And whereas in this one, the tables are turned a little bit because he has dementia. So he's confused and he's vulnerable and he's angry and he's all many, many, many different things, childlike and then quite abusive. And, and Logan just sort of is in that carer role of taking care day in and day out and also keeping him hidden from authorities. So it's a great dynamic. It's great fun to play it um, with that, my great friend and one of the great actors I've ever met. The young girl who is created from DNA and it becomes clear that that uh, DNA might very much resemble my own which was stolen. So it's not like he chose to have a daughter or anything like that. But he's confronted with genetics very similar to his own and a task to rescue, save, protect her. He doesn't want that task. And he pushes away for as long as he can. Um, but that relationship between those two characters, so the father-daughter is, I think, very strong. And this young girl, Daphne, who plays that part, uh, is absolutely astonishing. And do you have any hopes for what the fans will take away or be thinking about after having seen the film? My goal from this, because I talk to fans every day of my life, every second day at least, for the last 17 years, is that every one of them, because I know they know it and they say it to me all the time, but after they see this movie, they say, that is the Wolverine movie we've been waiting to see. So that's my hope. That's my dream. And that was the guiding star, really, to making this movie. Awesome. That's great. That's everything. Thank Thanks, you so man. much. You still have time. Two days on the road, only one meal and hardly any sleep. She's 11, I'm fucking 90. Bu videoyu beğendiyseniz beğenip paylaşarak bize destek olabilir. Beğenmediyseniz beğenmedim tuşuna basabilirsiniz. Kanalımıza abone olup yanındaki çan işaretini tıklayarak bu kanalın bildirimlerini bana gönder demeyi unutmayın. Destek vermek için mağazamıza uğrayabilirsiniz. Görüşürüz.